Phosphorus is a crucial element in living systems. So far in looking at polypeptides and carbohydrates, we haven't really encountered phosphorus, but as we move to the nucleic acids and their building blocks, the nucleotides will start to see phosphorus a lot more often. In biochemical systems, phosphorus typically appears in the plus five oxidation state as part of some kind of oxyanion, such as the phosphate anion. And it's used for a variety of purposes, as an anionic tag, for example, as a source of energy in the form of these polyphosphates with multiple phosphate groups linked together, and for other purposes. This series of videos is all about the bioorganic role of phosphorus. And in particular, we're going to focus on two classes of phosphorus-containing compounds, the so-called phosphoesters, which include a phosphate group linked to one or more organic groups, as we find in the nucleic acid polymers and in nucleotides, and phosphoanhydrides, which are sort of analogous to carboxylic acid anhydrides in that they consist of multiple phosphate groups linked together through the loss of a water molecule. Phosphoanhydrides are a key energy source in living systems, and the energy is really found in these relatively weak phosphorus-oxygen bonds, which are susceptible to hydrolysis reactions, which tend to be exothermic, energy-releasing, and a source of chemical energy for further transformations inside a cell. The states of phosphorus found in biochemical systems include phosphates or phosphoric acid, phosphoesters, which include at least one organic group, and phosphoanhydrides, which typically include an organic group linked to two or more phosphates that are linked linearly. Phosphoric acid is the simplest form of biochemical phosphorus. Let's list the ionization states of phosphoric acid and determine its dominant form at pH 7 to get a sense of the typical charge state of phosphate in a biochemical system. The three ionization states of phosphoric acid differ in the number of protons. The first involves just the loss of a single proton from phosphoric acid and contains a negative one charge. The second contains a negative two charge and involves the loss of two protons relative to phosphoric acid. And the third involves the loss of three protons, contains no protons within its structure, and has an overall charge of negative three. This last ionization state is the phosphate anion. To determine the dominant form of phosphoric acid at pH 7, we need to know the pKa values between these different ionization states. Phosphoric acid is relatively acidic. Its first pKa is 2.15 meaning it's mostly protonated only at pHs below 2.15. Its second pKa is 7.2, and its third pKa is about 12.3. What this means is that at pH 7, we're almost to the second pKa, but not quite. The dominant ionization state of phosphoric acid, then, in solution at pH 7, is this monoanion. When we replace one of the hydroxyl groups with an organic group, here represented as R, we end up at a phosphomonoester. And the term ester here is meant to evoke the notion of a carboxylic acid ester with a PO double bond and an OR group. Phosphomonoesters only have two ionization states since they only have two acidic protons. The first contains an overall charge of negative one, and the second contains an overall charge of negative two. And here again, the dominant ionization state at pH 7 depends on the pKa's between these ionization states. For a phosphomonoester, a typical first pKa is around 1.5, and a typical second pKa is around 7.5. And so, similar to the phosphoric acid situation, the dominant ionization state of a phosphomonoester at pH 7, in solution at pH 7, is the monoanionic form with an overall charge of negative one and one proton missing relative to the neutral form. Naturally, in the phosphodiester, we replace two of the hydroxyl groups linked to phosphorus and phosphoric acid with alkoxy groups. And phosphodiesters have only one alternative ionization state with the proton on that last remaining hydroxyl group removed to give a structure with an overall charge of negative one. The pKa of a phosphodiester is actually quite low. It's about 1.3. And so we see that at pH 7, the dominant ionization state in solution of a phosphodiester is actually just like the two cases above, the monoanionic form with an overall charge of negative 1 and 1 anionic oxygen. An important lesson here is that phosphorus in biochemical systems tends to be associated with negative charge on its attached oxygens. In the phosphate, or here the dihydrogen phosphate anion, phosphomonoesters and phosphodiesters, we can expect substantial negative charge 
on these functional groups within biochemical systems where pH 7 is the norm. We also find phosphorus in biochemical systems involved in POP linkages as part of phosphoanhydrides, and we'll see two examples on this slide. In the diphosphates, which are also known as pyrophosphates, two molecules of phosphoric acid have come together with loss of water to form a POP linkage between two phosphorus atoms in the plus 5 oxidation state. In essence, we can think of this diphosphate here, which is linked to one organic group, as derived from a condensation reaction between phosphoric acid in its minus 2 ionization state and a phosphomonoester. The loss of water from these two reactants with formation of a PO bond results in the diphosphate structure shown here. Likewise, if we take a diphosphate and we hit it with yet another equivalent of phosphoric acid, causing another condensation reaction to take place, we end up with a triphosphate. Now, the ionization state here isn't quite right. There should be a hydrogen here, a proton here, really, in order for us to lose H2O. But the general idea here, again, is the condensation of a phosphoric acid molecule or equivalent ionization state with a diphosphate gives a triphosphate. And in the triphosphate, we see really three phosphate groups chained together through POP linkages. There are a number of famous examples of triphosphates. ATP, adenosine triphosphate, is probably the most famous example, but there are others, such as GTP, the guanidine or guanine equivalent of this, and CTP, a cytidine equivalent. These triphosphates are great energy stores because the PO linkages are quite weak. In essence, what this means is that these diphosphates and triphosphates want to move back to the separated phosphomonoesters and phosphates. Thermodynamically, this is the favored direction of this reaction. A lot of the energy storing processes that occur in biochemical systems involve the formation of these high energy structures. When the energy is needed, these kinds of reactions take place to release phosphate and a diphosphate or a monophosphate ester as the products. Finally, I wanted to take a moment to look at a phosphate group inside a real metabolite. This is glucose 6-phosphate, an intermediate important in glycolysis. And you can see the sugar portion of this molecule here and the phosphate group linked to carbon 6. Well, one thing to point out, one quick nomenclature thing to point out, is that the PO3 group, which we can think of as linked to the oxygen or the 6-hydroxyl of glucose, is referred to as a phosphoryl group in and of itself. And so you'll hear things like phosphoryl group transfer. These reactions involve the transfer of this PO3 unit. Another thing worth noting here is the geometry. If we look at the geometry of the central phosphorus atom, we see that it has four electron pair domains. There's a bond coming out towards us, and there's a bond going back away from us. This means that the geometry of the phosphate phosphorus is tetrahedral. This region of the molecule around the phosphate group is strongly negatively charged because of the partial or even formally full negative charges on the phosphate oxygens. Here I've drawn the minus 2 ionization state. And that negative charge is important in a biochemical context, as we'll see moving forward.